So here what we're going to do is simply return context.posts and go ahead and actually use the same includes that we're using here when we got post by ID. So we can just go ahead and return just like this. So we're getting all the posts and including the user navigation property, the replies and the reply users, as well as the post forum on each of these posts. Just close it off with a semicolon and we'll go ahead and start the server again. Okay, so yeah, so now we have a basic home landing page, um, of course, minus any kind of reasonable styling. But you see here we have these posts um, along with the user who posted them and links over to them um, with no replies being shown. Um, also notice that when we hover over each of the posts, we can actually see the um, ID of that post at the bottom of the screen in the browser. We also have a NFT search form here and we have our headings which need some styling. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and fix our layout so that we use a more appropriate navigation bar at the top here and then we'll actually apply some of the very basic CSS in this course to style our layout as well as our home page here to get things um, start looking a little bit nicer. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and minimize this and we're going to strictly be dealing with our front end now for a little while. So we're going to go into our views and our shared directory here and then into this layout.cshtml file. So we looked at this at the very beginning of the series, um, but if you recall, this is where our nav bar is defined. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, just remove everything out of this div class navbar header div. And what I'm going to put in here instead is an anchor tag and we're going to give it a class of navbar slash brand and then also nav, nav uh, logo which we'll need to write ourselves here. That's going to take care of actually putting our logo up here in the navigation bar. So we'll also create a link here which will bring us back to the home controller and of course the index action on the home controller. That'll just serve as our return home link. Um, and now what I'd like to do is inside of this unordered list, go ahead and remove the set of list items that are in there currently. And what we're going to do is to create a list item and we'll create a link to our forum index. So we'll have ASP controller is equal to forum and ASP action is equal to index and then that'll just say forums. And this will be available to anyone whether or not they're logged in or not. So uh, when it comes to functionality of this uh, forum application, maybe we'll give read-only access, if you will, to users who are not authenticated. And so users who are authenticated, who register and log in to the application, will give those users the ability to create posts and replies, as well as manage some sort of user profile. And so what I want to do here then is to have a sort of conditional block here where we say like if the user is signed in, then we're going to provide them with some more options up here in the navigation area. And the way that we're going to do that is to actually inject an instance of our user manager here in this uh, layout view. So we can do that directly at the top of the CSHTML here and we can say using Microsoft dot ASP net core dot identity and then we're going to make two injections here so we just simply say at inject and we can do user manager and here we need to pass our application user type which is of course in our lambda forums dot data project under uh, data dot models dot application user and we'll call this our user manager and then we'll need to make a second injection here for our sign-in manager which is another nice feature um, we simply also pass this an application user and we'll call this sign-in manager and so now we can use the sign-in manager down here we'll say if sign-in manager dot is signed in and we also have access to that user 
claims identity object here, um, or claims principal object here that, that will identify the user who is sort of running this, uh, this process. In other words, who's using our application here. And here we'll provide them with a new item in our nav bar. And we'll give it a class of dropdown. And we'll make a, an anchor tag here just so that we kind of get the uh, link style cursor. But we won't point it anywhere, so we'll point it at hashtag. And its class will be dropdown toggle. So we'll continue to use some bootstrap here. And we'll say data toggle is equal to dropdown. Roll is equal to button. And we can use some other things here, like this area has pop-up. We can set to true. And area expanded. Uh, we'll set that to false. And we'll say settings here. And then we'll just create a span of class caret here. So we won't get into too much detail about uh, the bootstrap specifics here, but we are using um, bootstrap to kind of make our navigation bar look um, fairly reasonable. Okay, so now we can style this unordered list as a drop down menu. And we'll have a separator here with class divider. And we'll separate this drop down just into a few sections here. So we'll have a class of drop down header. And we'll call this section profile. And then we'll create a link here to edit the user's profile or view their current profile um, where they can then edit it. So we'll say my profile and then we'll wrap this in an anchor tag with ASP controller, profile controller, ASP action, and we'll just make it detail. And then when we create our detail view, we'll make it so that if you're the current user viewing your profile, then you'll be able to edit it. Otherwise, of course, you could make a separate edit action on your profile controller. And now what I'll do is I'll also create another section that will say if the user dot is in role, and we'll look at the roles here in a little while, we'll say if they're in this admin role, which of course we haven't defined yet, then they're gonna get this other section here for admin functions. So we'll create another separator with a class of divider once again. And we'll have another drop down header. And we'll call this section admin. You can make this a separate drop down too if you prefer. Um, but all right, so we'll go ahead and create a link here and we'll give admins the ability to create forums, for instance, and maybe view a list of all the users in the system or something. So two simple things we could implement. So we'll have ASP controller forum with ASP action create. And admin users, yeah, will have the ability to create forums. So we'll go ahead and close that. And then they'll also have the ability to view users. Um, so all the system users. And so maybe we'll create an index action on our profile view where they can do that. And we'll make sure to authorize um, on the controller as well such that only admin users should be able to activate those routes. Okay, so after this unordered list, what I'll do is I'll also say if, I'm going to use the sign in manager and we'll say if not is signed in, pass it some user. So if the user is not signed in, we need to provide them with links to sign in or register. And we'll move those over to the right side of the nav bar. And once again, use tag helpers here to visit this time our account controller. And we'll say sign in. And just to make this look a little bit different, I'm not going to use the active tag in the normal sense of highlighting whatever's active, but just to make the register look a little bit more prominent, we'll apply a, a class active on it. And here, rather than visiting the login action, of course, we'll visit the register action.
Okay, finally, if they are signed in, so I'm just gonna actually go ahead and copy this block of code here. So I'm gonna remove the exclamation mark. So now if uh, the user is signed in, we need to provide the ability for the user to actually log out. So create um, an ASP action of log out and we'll say sign out. Um, but what's different about this is if you take a look at the account controller and the logout action, it's actually going to require an HTTP POST method. So we'll go ahead and visit that over here in the account controller. If we scroll down to what was already scaffolded out for us here, um, and we look for log out, you can see that this is an HTTP POST method. One reason that it's a good idea to make the logout a POST request rather than a standard GET request is that you know, you could have a user create, say, like an image tag or something where the the source of the image is actually the link to your site slash account slash logout. And then unknowingly, you've just been logged out of the application. So we just kind of protect that by by actually making sign out a post request, which means that this link actually has to be inside of a form. So let's go ahead and wrap it in one. So we'll have a form. ASP controller is equal to account and ASP action is equal to log out with a method of post. Okay, I'll give this form an ID and a class of navbar write just like our sign in. And then we'll move the unordered list and everything inside the form. And then just before the sign out link, we'll put a standard list item here where I might say something like hello, comma, and then we could use our user manager to actually get the username. Passing it uh, the user. Okay, so that should work pretty well. If we scroll down a bit, we can see here's where we're calling render body. That's where all of our views get injected. If we scroll down a little bit further, we have this footer that you can either keep or remove. I'm just gonna go ahead and actually remove this as well as uh, remove the HR tag. Now we've got some other really interesting things here, including these environment include tags. So you can see that when we're in the uh, development mode, we're actually including jQuery and Bootstrap in their unminified forms here. We're actually excluding the minified forms in development as well here. So that's kind of cool. We also have this render section uh, scripts and then setting required equal to false. And you can see that in layout pages here, so when we're rendering our different views, we can actually just define a section scripts and then pass the scripts into that section and have Razor handle their insertion. So anyway, we're gonna scroll up here and everything's looking pretty good. Um, but I would like to add a few things to our head tag now. Let me go ahead and save and make a commit anyway. Okay, and then we'll come back here. And what I'm going to do is actually um, inject some Google Fonts from the Google Font CDN as well as Google Material Icons. So you can check out those fonts over at fonts.google.com and I'm just going to bring in two of them. I'm going to bring in Roboto and Roboto Mono as well. And so we'll just go ahead and bring this up and I'm going to copy the standard import here and then I'm just going to actually paste it here just before we close out. Oops just before we close out our head tag. The other thing we can do is actually bring in material icons. So I'm just gonna search for material icons, CDN, Google, and we'll go ahead and find a link to the CDN there. Then we'll go maybe try material icons, material design, and we'll scroll down a bit here, and we'll check out the developer guide, and then getting the icons, and then just scrolling down here, and yeah, so we can actually currently use them via Google Web Fonts. This is the same Google Fonts API that we just pulled the fonts back from. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and we'll paste it in here as well. Yeah, 
And we won't use that in many places in this application, but where we do, it will look um, pretty nice and we can look at the syntax for that as well.